Welcome back to Wake Up America. I'm Alex Kramer. It is now time to get you caught up with some rapid reactions. Well, in the saga of President Joe Biden's classified documents, a new search of his Delaware residence found even more, six more items to be exact. So what do we know about this latest discovery? Personal notes were taken. The search lasted nearly 13 hours by the DOJ. And some documents span back to earlier than 2009 when he was just a senator. And the White House is trying to play it cool. The president saying that he has no regrets. Republicans outraged. And as Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs pointed out here, with these documents and Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, expected to step down, the walls are closing in on him. And Congressman Jim Jordan also pointed out the double standard in former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence being raided, but not President Biden's. Now, meanwhile, the left seems stumped. Democrats, Democratic Senators Tim Kaine, Dick Durbin, and Joe Manchin, all with different opinions. How does a senator accidentally take classified material home? Um, Margaret, I, I don't really know the answer to that question. At its heart, the issue is the same. Those documents should not have been in the personal possession of either Joe Biden or Donald Trump. But what happened and followed from it is significantly different. It's just hard to believe that, that in the United States of America, we have a former president and a current president. They're basically in the same situation. How does this happen? All right. So according to Nipsa's poll, 64 percent of Americans say that the president mishandled these documents. And then both Kane and Manchin have joined the chorus calling for a full investigation. Rob. I guess I'm surprised it's only 64 percent, by the way. I uh, think it would be higher than that. That means 36 percent out there are saying, no, this is exactly how we want top secret documents handled. Um, thank you for that, Alex. So it's been two weeks since the Biden document story broke. Some of these top secret documents, by the way, date all the way back to when Joe Biden was a U.S. senator. So that means that they've been in his possession, in his garage, in his office, who knows where else, for at least 14 years, which is pretty unbelievable. Joining us now for more on where this case goes from here is former acting U.S. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Uh, great to have you back on, Matt. Um, I, I'm wondering what you think of this. At this point, uh, Joe Biden's Delaware Beach House could be raided. The Justice Department said over the weekend that they are considering investigating his beach house, giving Biden time to then go to his beach house this weekend and, and clean things up before a possible search. That definitely didn't happen with Trump before Mar-a-Lago. Uh, what was your reaction to that? Yeah, good morning, Rob. It's good to be with you all. Um, you know, my reaction is quite simple, and that is that the two-tiered system of justice is alive and well. The hypocrisy on the left, uh, you know, they call it a, uh, you know, not even a search, a, you know, a FBI went in and uh, walked through Joe Biden's house for 13 hours, but, you know, of course, for weeks, we heard about the raid on Mar-a-Lago. Uh, you know, it's just, it's 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 rich. And then to know that um, how difficult, it quite frankly, is for U.S. senators to take classified information. Um, you know, I think about the access that I had when I was at the Department of Justice to classified information. That was certainly very controlled. And I know the way that. Uh, the Senate is not trusted with classified information. And so, I mean, this was it. This is, these were intentional acts by Joe Biden, and it, it points to a pattern uh, that's very concerning. And certainly, um, you know, Rob Herr, ultimately, when he gets in that job uh, as special counsel, I think he's going to have a lot of work to do because these are extraordinary um, events. But, you know, I, I continue to reinforce the one issue is what are the contents of these documents? Because right. there may be a pattern here of interest that Joe Biden um, could point to um, some of the fears and conspiracies uh, actually coming true, which is he's he has an uncanny interest for Ukraine, uh, Russia, possibly uh, other places where Hunter Biden was getting paid. Such a good point. What was in the documents? Why weren't they made public back in November? How many are out there? Uh, take a listen to what White House Special Assistant Ian Sam had to say over the weekend about how many documents there actually are. And can you give us a sense of how many classified documents we are now talking about total across all three locations? Sure, it's a good question. And, and actually, the answer to it is a little bit complicated because of this point that I'm making about the integrity of an ongoing Justice Department investigation. The Justice Department is going to be looking at all sorts of questions like that throughout their investigation. We want to be very, very careful 
to be respectful of the integrity of that investigation, to not speak too much about the underlying contents and materials, uh, especially things that we may not know all the answers to. All right, it's like Corrine Jean-Pierre. Uh, they've stonewalled the media and the American people, more importantly, for two weeks now. Why do they keep doing this? Why doesn't he just say, well, right now we have 36 documents, but we're continuing the search? Why stonewall? Well, first of all, it's it's fascinating to me that uh, if you compare and contrast the, the, you know, the, the information that was available on the Trump um, search, you ended up with what they said were you know, tens of thousands of pages most of those were just presidential records. A very small subset were alleged to be classified. In this case, the number is, um, we're not getting the page count, we're getting the document count. I have a feeling uh, if you start comparing the numbers uh, from both cases, it's going to end up in a similar page count. And I, that is what they're trying to avoid. They're, they're trying to desperately uh, somehow suggest that this is different. Um, it is different. And I'll tell you, it's much different because it's worse. Uh, you know, it spans a decades of public service yeah. where the president of the United States has been purloining documents uh, to his home. Um, at least 14 years. And, and Rehoboth Beach is lovely, but not in January. All right. So I just think it's so ridiculous that the DOJ telegraphs to Biden and the White House that they're thinking about searching his beach house. And then he goes to his beach house this weekend. In fact, he's still there. He won't get back to the White House until a little bit later today. We'll have to see what Corrine Jean-Pierre has to say when she holds her press availability this afternoon. Will they continue to stonewall? Um, I want to pivot now to the uh, Roe versus Wade draft opinion leak, um, that 23-page report that was released uh, last week by the court, the Washington Post said, was leaking the Dobbs opinion the perfect crime. It sure looks that way. Ridiculous that we're no closer today, eight months later, to figuring out who this leaker was. Do you think, uh, as former acting attorney general, do you think this could have been a member of the Supreme Court, maybe one of the liberal judges, one of the three liberal judges on the bench? Yeah, I, I, when I was dealing with leaks uh, at the Department of Justice, you always first go to who, who benefits from the leak? You know, who is who is going to uh, be the person uh, that is motivated to leak this? And I think it, you know the, the 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 investigation should go right to those people and their staff because ultimately, um, you know, this was a very uh, damaging leak. It damaged, it undermined, um, you know, the court in in a significant way. Um, these leak investigations are very hard. Having participated in many. Uh, leaks as an investigator and as a leader, you know, I've seen how hard you can narrow it down to a small group, but it's very hard to get the evidence to put it on one person. But this is uh, obviously disappointing that the court, um, you know, which the left especially, but, you know, everyone should hold in high esteem and should be above reproach uh, because of their position in our society uh, has, you know, essentially became uh, like the rest of the government, just yeah. a bunch of uh, leakers and liars. Is that suspicious to you, though? That So they interviewed 82 people um, 126 times, so some people got interviewed twice. Is it suspicious to you that that report comes out last week and they say, hey, listen, no idea who did this? Do you think maybe they do know maybe it is actually one of these nine members of the Supreme Court, one of the nine judges, and that they don't want that getting out there? Yeah, it's hard. If you read that report, uh, there's usually there's a little hat tip or a suggestion in an investigative report right. um, uh, one way or another, and we didn't get that in this report that I can that I can read. And so uh, I think they might have a pretty good idea, again, you know, applying Occam's razor that the most likely explanation is the explanation, but I don't think they have the evidence uh, to to put pin it on one person. Yeah, the House says they're going to look into this very soon. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they give everyone, all 82 people, immunity. So then they're forced to testify, maybe in a closed room panel or something like that. Uh, I did think this was interesting, just about 15 seconds. Apparently, the printers that they use at the Supreme Court don't have logs, so you can track who's printing what. We learned that in the 23-page report. And I'm thinking to myself, every law firm in America, any big law firm has this, so you know who's printing what. Uh, did that surprise you? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Obviously, you have billing codes at law firms and, and all sorts of ways to make sure that you know who's using your, your equipment. I, I, you know, I, I just think it boils down to trying to figure out um, you know, the electronics on the thing and who, who had access to it. And, you know, basic block and tackling investigation. But I think they did that and still don't have an answer. Yeah, good call. Um, great to have you back on. Former Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. We'll do it again soon. Thank you.
Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532. 